We may, therefore, have some misunderstandings about its nature. The story that awaits you has not been fully told. In fact, its conclusion is not yet known, even to myself. It is in that way that my book is special. It is in that way that you are special. Without you, there is no story. Chapter one. Normal isn't what it used to be. This is a story about change. Nestled in a shallow valley is the town of Beacon Pines. Far from the town square, across the river, past the neglected welcome sign, a young boy walks alone at dawn. His name is Luca Van Horn, and like you, dear reader, he's here for a reason. was Luca's closest friend. He possessed many fine qualities, but subtlety was not one of them. Rolo finally noticed the tears swelling in his friend's eyes and the flowers on the grave. Wonderful! I had a good feeling about you from the moment you opened my book. That charm is a very special thing. Very special indeed. Keep hold of it for now. Its purpose will reveal itself soon enough. to the side suspiciously.
reader, forgive me for this interlude. Remember that charm you found in the dandelion patch? There are more of those special charms to discover throughout Beacon Pines. They've been known to reveal themselves to those who are willing. Some of them can be found in this very house. Since Gran had moved in, the house was more peaceful, more orderly, and more covered in flowery fabric. One of his father's old stethoscopes. Luca had spent countless hours listening to anything and everything with it. Not for years, though. obligation. regarding the use of charms earlier. Excuse me, I tend to have a flair for the dramatic. You are about to encounter your first turning point. There are certain times in this tale when everything hinges on a single word. Step forth, dear reader. On the other hand, I suppose there's no reason to rush things. Gran will be waiting when you return. An array of prepared meals crowded the refrigerator each labeled with the day of the week. A pair of dull scissors, a broken can opener, a mostly empty bottle of glue, and some loose string. The only piece of furniture Gran had brought when she moved in was an old hutch. Luca paused at his parents' bedroom door. He just wasn't ready to go in yet. Gran had commandeered the upstairs closet when she moved in. Some things need shelter from a young boy's mischief, she said. Luca tossed on his favorite old sweater. Even though it was the first day of summer, a chill still hung in the air. Gran's moving in meant that most of Luca's things had been crammed in the corner. Luca was somewhat annoyed by the situation. Gran's bed was undisturbed. Luca didn't mind that she had a habit of falling asleep in front of the fireplace. It meant that he could read late into the night. Young Luca would spend hours hiding in the bushes, waiting for a chance to jump out and startle his mother. She always enjoyed humoring him by feigning terror. A sturdy old wheelbarrow. A beginner's guide to gardening laid open on the bench. Just gonna... 
gonna go ponder for the day. This was Luca's chance to sell his alibi. You've managed to navigate your first turning point without too much of a mess. That is the power of charms. A single word can change everything. I think it's time to introduce you to the Chronicle. The Chronicle is a record of the decisions you've made. You can see the turning point which has been revealed. At any time, you can use the Chronicle to go back and invoke different charms, creating new branches. Luckily for us, this is the one and only turning point where the charms won't dramatically alter fate. It's the perfect opportunity to experiment with rewriting things. We were just gonna go hide for the day. Traditionally, when one is trying to hide something, they avoid literally using the word hide. <laughs> All's well that ends well. For a town that saw few visitors, the welcome was perhaps more grand than necessary. Welcome to Beacon Pines. For many years, this valley had been a small mining outpost. It wasn't until Sharper Valentine built his fertilizer company that Beacon Pines was established. Over the next 30 years, the town had grown and prospered until the foul harvest and his sudden death. In the six years since, everyone was simply trying to get by. Kerr was the CEO of Perennial Harvest Company. He had become a fixture around town over the past few years. After the failing of Valentine Fertilizer, the town was hungry to welcome a new source of employment. Augustus Valentine was not busy. <laughs> Flustered, Gus instinctively loosened his tie.
Whenever Luca saw his dad's chair by the pond, it reminded him of the days they'd pack up a couple of sandwiches and fish until sundown. Luca opened the tackle box and picked the perfect bait. Luca gently baited a feather onto the hook. Good for skimming the surface. Luca gently baited it. Good for skimming the surface. Luca tied a shoestring to the hook. What fish could resist a nice shoestring? Luca gently at first. Luca gently at first. The boys had a good thing going. As long as they kept old Jeff happy, they had an endless source of precious materials to add to the treehouse. On certain nights, when the clouds were just right, the boys could tune into strange patterns of static. Rollo thinks it's aliens. He always thinks it's aliens. Luca's winter coat decommissioned for the summer. With the cold holding out longer than usual, he reconsidered its usefulness. 